Hello everyone, it is your host Beachamp, and with me I have Impossible Toaster. We have another Critter Clash game for you, part two, Black Tiger 1 vs. Nisparox on Harbor. Toast, what's going on? You are, you've just been studying feverishly with Davo about Nisparox history. Tell me about this mysterious player. I just got the full rundown. How much of it I remember is a different matter, but uh, <laughs> apparently very strong melee <laughs> micro, strong pure swimmer game, uh, and apparently no apparent weaknesses. Yes, yes. We, we were both just studying with uh, Davo, who knows all of the Nisparox lore, and uh, basically he said he's going to win. Uh, that's Davo's prediction. Is Nisprox is the best in the world, and no one can beat him. Um, maybe we'll not see exactly if he that. Lives up to that. <laughs> uh, but it's, I mean, seriously though, amazing player. Just came to the community. Uh, he's been playing for a long time, but just came recently to the community, past six, eight months or so. And he's been on the YouTube channel before. Very, very strong player. Definitely has been somewhat uh, meta defining. Yeah, with his strategies with melee units, um, regeneration, tanky units, and pure swimmers, uh, alongside alongside some of the other top players. So well, Harbor, I'm going for the center here. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a kerfuffle here. I think these hench can actually take out uh, or stop this workshop going up unless they get more in here, which they are. Yeah, great, great work by Nisbrox. I've also seen him do some pretty cool stuff with henchmen. Black Tiger one not giving up and throwing down a proxy chamber. I like this strategy a lot. This is You'll why out of it. you always chase the enemy henchmen. You never let them go. LOL, this is OP. <laughs> oh, it's we just saw a billion of these. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we, should we? No, that's a spoiler, right? In case people haven't seen that game, because that's. Oh my god! Watch. That, let's let's not talk about that. Watch. Uh, pause right now and watch Powell versus Black Tiger three. Uh, and then this is Black Tiger one, of course. Black Tiger three's brother, and we are going to see uh, these OP units come come in and. Some Someone more. copied my units. It does. Wait, sorry, you're casting. We are casting. We are casting. Uh, that was Powell just joining the chat temporarily there. And uh, it looks like quickly abandoning his spam strategy and building some tank tanks, um, which I don't know if it's going to serve as well. I feel like the, the big thing with the strategy is you just got to build a million of these ranged. But yeah. he does have artillery coming out, which is going to be pretty strong. Oh, he's going to get those towers. Yeah, and it's going to be good against uh, these ranged uh, hyena eels as well. Now, do they have more range than the termites? Uh, they do. These, yeah, they, they do. should. They should be yeah, able to size. So they can go far out enough to see that they can't be retaliated against. Of course, that only happens if you micro them. Yeah, you'd have to have perfect micro to do it. Um, and... It's still looking really, really good for Black Tiger 1 here. A lot of initiative. He does have this expo. Only two rods at home. I'd like to see him build a third rod to help support all of his units. Uh, but he's still doing great. The artillery is coming in super, super strong here. Um, this is Gazelle too. This is exactly what Davo was talking about. Really expensive unit. Extremely expensive. Wow. Uh, super fast. But it, they are doing work right now. They... they we're seeing a huge thinning of Black Tiger 1's units. Uh, I'm actually pretty surprised that it looks like... He did pull his entire home uh, mining squad to go fight that. Yeah, they they're, they're now dead. And they are now dead. So there's a massive blow to this Barox's economy, and he taps out. Yeah. Wow. Fast game. Six-minute game. Uh, Black Tiger 1 just goes in and sweeps Nesprox's legs out from under him. What was the deciding factor? Was it the OP units, Toast? Tell me, was it the OP units? It, I, I don't think I 
experience those units enough to to say whether it's the units themselves or just the the pressure. I think it was the the, the winning play was as soon as he lost that center after he already committed so many henchmen, he went and got that proxy chamber down, mm -hmm. and he was not discovered uh, soon enough. Yeah. I definitely agree with that, and I think also just having their artillery. That artillery was able to slow down Nisbrox's, uh Hyena Eels enough that uh, Black Tiger was able to gain more of a footing and force Nisbrox to use his Mining Hench to attack. And uh, once those Hench were taken off the coal, then it was basically curtains uh, because Black Tiger had a lot of coal production, was able to keep up the unit production and didn't get any raids or anything back at home. If Maybe if Nesprox would have done a couple units and one of those gazelle, two of those gazelles over to Black Tiger's lab, then maybe he would have had to pull units off, or pull henchmen off mining, and it could have been a maybe more even matchup. But either way, um, great work by Black Tiger. Strong initiative. Also, I love these harbor games that are sh popping up. We got a lot of harbor being played. I love harbor. We played on harbor. That was a good yeah. game. All right, so we're coming in here again. Part two maps. Uh, we can pick any of them. So if Nisbrox wants, he can pick harbor again. But there is Red Beach, Harbor, Cenote, Devil's Island, Fuhrer. Face off 1v1 in Camarao. And it's Nisprox map pick. Is he deliberating or is he not aware that he's supposed to be picking? He's just been reminded. It's Camaro. Nice. I was just typing out all of the uh, options here and didn't even need them. All right, so this we is could good. be we could be seeing those termites again here. <laughs> yeah, we could see Black Tiger one bring out the termites again. What if this just becomes like the fad unit that everyone uses uh, for this tournament? This is all we see for the rest of Clitter, Critter Clash. Just one kind of game, all started by Powell. Well, it might not make for an interesting tournament, but it would make for a memorable one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we remember the tournament as a whole, certainly. BT still picking an army here. Yeah, definitely. So he, it, it's not looking like he's reaching straight for that spam range. This termite yields again. I'm wondering if he's going to do something like a loner rush. Uh, I think you're you're up a game. If you want to try something edgy, that's the thing to try right now. Loner rushes are really strong and you can throw your opponent off guard. I don't know that I like a Lone Rush on this map. Just because of how slow it is to get off the ground and how vulnerable you are while working your way toward it. You'd have yeah. to know exactly what your opponent's doing. Yeah, you'd have to scout. Um, and that sounds terrible. I would never do that. Yeah, I think I think it would be tough. It's uh, especially versus an opponent like Nesperox, who's just very no strong. What evil plans our enemies have afoot, um, but we can put right. So we do have Nesperox in purple. We got a little color change here. Black Tiger one down in yellow, and Nesperox going with the straightaway rod. So faster build order here. No bolts for BT yet. Yeah, he's just like I don't need rods. What's the point? Getting one there. So this is looking like a traditional sort of start. Yeah. I'm not expecting anything crazy after looking at this build order, but you just never know. It's a possible creature. 
standard level two and expansion. Yeah, well, that's a relatively fast second rod for PT1. Yeah, and wow, this ocean is vast and endless. Uh, it doesn't look like Nisprox is going for that second rod quite yet. There it goes up. And uh, BT1 spreading out, it looks like. Uh, Scout on yep. the right-hand side of the map, and on the left-hand side of the map, looks like he's going to set up shop. I very much approve of this. So he's getting the expansion on the left, making sure his opponent isn't expanding on the right. And I, wow, four rods for Nisperox. What is the plan here? And look at that spacing, the, the double-wide spacing. Really trying to stay wide with that. Uh, not sure why. The issue with this, like you're putting so much investment into a lack, and in the meantime you have all these henchmen that can't mine efficiently because there, there's not enough coal piles for them. Uh, but Black Tiger One building this interesting fence here, separating himself from his workshop, and um, he's almost to level two. Nisprox, a little bit behind him, and getting this coal up on the right hand side, but definitely behind in expansion and development. This is, has to be like some fast level of rebuild from this bro. Like, there's so much a lack investment. I'm wondering if he's going to go advance structures into um, grid upgrade. Uh, yeah, possibly. Um, grid is not available until level three now, so you'd have to go three first, which we might see coming up here soon. I'd expect it. He is going for the center geyser, which is a strong play. And now expansion looks a little bit equal, except Black Tiger 1 has units, these uh, Coyote Pythons. And they are going to... There's Plague units coming out. Oh, but there's oh, the defense that uh, defense Black Tiger, which is a really nice move. I like this move by Black Tiger. Don't have to worry about the lab, uh, at least for a little bit. But because of the double fence, it's going to cut off reinforcements from one side. But uh, he does have Keen Sense. The Keen Sense is going to be really strong against these uh, chameleons. He has to respond quick to this. And decisively. What is he? Yeah. Lot of sand beams here. Yeah, Nisprox. There's artillery. Be... Yep. That's going to be really nice. Uh... <laughs> Damaging his own generator a little bit. Level 3 coming for Nisprox. And there is a we like to see. Nisprox did scout out this uh, bottom island. Doesn't see anyone in the water. So Nisprox now knows that he has a little bit more freedom and territory to, to expand there if he wants to. And I think he's going to be able to hold this choke pretty nicely. Yeah, he's going to hit level 3 well in advance of Black Tiger. And he's got these three geysers to beat these single geysers. He's building his second one now. And... Black Tiger hasn't managed to do any real damage with all these units that he built. Yeah. Um, Nisprox definitely, I would say, has a slight advantage on resources right now with all the generators he has. He hasn't expanded to his second workshop uh, on the right-hand side of the map. But he does have all this artillery, which is going to be so good. That long Black range thirty percent to level three. There's so much time for Nisprox to do damage. He could take out the expansion here. Yeah, this is not looking good for Black Tiger at all. And the plague has it hit? He's, he he hasn't used the plague surprisingly with these cockroaches. So much artillery. I think artillery is wow. good on this map because of how narrow these pathways are. Artillery is killing his own level 1 units just as quickly as with the friendly fire. And there is Black Tiger at level 3. So Nisprox not doing as much damage as I expected him to do during this time. Um, Black Tiger is just now getting advanced structures though. Nisprox getting the grid upgrade. That's going to be absolutely massive for him. Um, but these... Oog Pister hammerheads are going to be really, really nice to be able to take out any of this artillery. Especially because Nisprox has this poison artillery as well. And Nisprox is building ram pythons now, uh, which they are more cost effective against these um, 
oopist just because they don't, they don't have to pick the card to collect. Absolutely. Definitely, they, they are more cost-effective, but uh, right now, Black Tiger just seems to have a slight advantage um, in these in these micro matchups here. Nisbrox does have more chambers, though. As long as Nisbrox can hold on to these upgraded geysers with the grid upgrade, he's going to be able to uh, gain the advantage in the long run. He just has to not lose them. Yeah, yeah. Which he might might lose one out of his lab. That's being undefended. Be really bad. He needs it to be repaired. Oh, he's not gonna make it. Yeah, he lost the geyser there, and he's getting raided as expo on the island. Black tigers retreating. Um, and well, black tiger has yoke. Miss Rox does too. Black tiger doesn't have a lot of units. Wow. It Ms. is Brock's dangerous it to lose the momentum here because he, if he loses these chambers in the middle and his expansion, that's going to be really bad. Oh, he built that air chamber, then blew it up. Didn't have air units, I guess. And now he's going to have to build something to take on these rams. I think there's too many rams. Yeah, there's too many rams. He's gonna need, he needs a fence. He needs a couple fences right now to be able to slow down units. Oh. Yeah, if he were to fence off the water here uh, to protect his expansion, then he might be able to build up a little bit more mass. But until then, uh, building these deflect units is not good. It's They're just not going to be cost effective. They have this immune that he doesn't need. Um... And I guess his horns is not... Oh, but he didn't have the water chamber. That's going to hurt him a lot. He lost his water chambers. He, he lost both of them. Yeah. Not only was that key to him building his amphib units, but also that was his main you know, unit production. And what was he going to do now? There's so many rams. He cannot he cannot get the momentum back. And also, Miss Brooks has most of the map and a much greater economy. This is all downhill from... Here. Oh, he has Black lower. <laughs> oh. oh, this guy. I th I don't know. I don't know if Nisbrox is going to be shaken by this. This is um, a barrier destroyer loner. He could take out this guy. So he's... He could, he, I, would, I would go for the henchman. I feel like I would hit one ping on the lab and then go for the henchman because um, that way Nisbrox gets the notification your lab's under attack. And yeah, there we go. He's going to be able to take out all these henchmen without any issues. Oh, but the gyro drop in BT1's base is massive. That just circumvented the fences. It's going to be really hard to defend. Um, there is a loner coming out in base. It needs to be healed ASAP. But Black Tire calling GG. Wow. I was actually that that was a great play by Nisbarox, uh just circumventing yeah. fence with the gyro drop. So he recognized uh, that he could just spam those rams. He had slightly better economy. He was going up against deflect units, and he just massed them. And there wasn't a lot the BT could really do. Yeah, yeah. Especially he focused down those water chambers. That was so strong. Uh, these rams charge attack horns. Horns got a buff, of course, in this patch. A little bit cheaper now. Charge attack is so good because you don't have to micro at all. You just attack, move, and uh, they'll charge at anything in their way. Uh, it's very, very easy because them with close range for ranged attacks. Good with henchmen. Uh, it's just a good unit. I think Black Tiger was. He was put behind because he didn't take advantage uh, at level two when he had those units and Miss Brooks was being really greedy. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't get in fast enough. I feel like he built up too many coyotes, honestly, uh, before going in. And that led to Miss Brooks being able to build a few units as well and defending. It's a 
going to be game three. I mean, these are two really awesome players, and it's going to be sad to see one of them out of the tournaments already. Uh, feels like it's just getting started, honestly. Uh, we're not even in part three yet, which is going to be the double elimination portion of the bracket. Who do you have your ice cream on, Toast? Uh, I, I, I want to see more of Miss Bros. Uh, yeah, both. So you're, so you're like... saying... Um, gosh, I, I, I don't want to spoil that. Basically, to spoil it, but uh, the other game, but that that would be crazy to see Black Tiger one out of the tournament. Um, especially, I mean, Black Tiger one's been a mainstay in tournaments for a really long time as being one of the top contenders, one of the finalists, and to see an upset from a player that hasn't been in a tournament before is pretty amazing. Uh, and to get knocked out before even getting to the top eight. I always expect to see the Black Tigers in the top four. Uh, so to see this, it would be pretty nuts. But see what map they get picked. Is I joined too soon? You joined, and then I thought... Wow, I can't believe you. had joined, so I joined. <laughs> uh, Wait, what's God. your excuse? Because I, I saw the two out of six. <laughs> well, my excuse is that sometimes it doesn't update for me. Oh, uh, so you just randomly join, even though it says one out of six? Yeah, if it's been a while, I'll be like, you know, I'm just going to check out the scene. <laughs> wow. So, let's see, Black Tiger won, if I, does he know, <laughs> does this Brox know there's another game? Uh, he's just not in the lobby at all. Um, that's a good question. Let's, let's tag him. I'm going to pause the stream, or pause the recording. And, all right, he was lost, but Toast found him. Last game. Is it Devil's Island? That would be a cool counter pick. Devil's Island. I'm in for it. Oh, Nisprox was purple last time, wasn't he? I should give him that color in case he wants it. Yeah, Devil's Island is, uh, you know, I wonder if Black Tiger 1 is just going to take a book out of Powell and uh, rush in the ex uh, similar way that we saw that Black Tiger 3 game. You mean take a page out of his book? <laughs> yeah. Rather than taking a book out of him. Oh, yes. Take I'm a sure. Why? Take, he has books inside of him. Take a page. Take, take, check out a book from the library of Powell. <laughs> oh, gosh. We all right. Take out all enemy labs. Let's get Black to Tiger it. One. Nisparox. Duel of the century. After this game, one of them is going to be out of the Critter Clash 3 tournament. Right. It's a struggle for tournament survival. Yeah, and... And we got one rod for each player. Yeah, and this is... I mean, it's it's going to start like all, like all games do, with henchman mining and building. This map is so awkward. We've got four coal piles, and all the expansions are so far away, and they have, we have three each. I don't like it. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, do you favor one side over the other on this map? I have no idea. I've never thought about it. Yeah, I, it's tough, but I think top has an advantage. Uh, I I just think. I think so. I think that the the lower side uh, expansions are easily reachable from the, the top 
and yeah. the same is not true on the other side of the map or rather it is they're both uh, sets of expansions are easily reachable from the top but not necessarily from the bottom yeah i i i think that this bottom right coal area is basically the contested area this top coal belongs to the top player and then there's this left coal that belongs to the bottom player and so it's all about this bottom right coal plus the water geyser and land geyser and i feel like it's just a little bit more accessible from the top player i think you're right yeah and that's level two bt1 yep and this rocks 50 percent of the way there doesn't look like no it's units be any coming sort of out rush. It's a, it's a gentleman's game. Everybody's giving each other time. Oh, well, there is the I spoke score. too soon. I spoke too soon. No gentleman would use a cheetah score. <laughs> Only one, though. <laughs> Only one. And cheetah scorps, a uh, critter clash favorite. We've seen these a lot. We've seen them used in the World Cup. We've seen them used in tournaments throughout throughout the whole history of possible creatures uh very fast barrier destroy units just make really awesome raiders and is it gonna be able to take down this henchman oh, oh it was no, so he's... close oh no oh uh, that ended up four health. Four he could health have got him left. but he just got distracted yeah oh cuttlefish gazelle that's gonna be good against the camouflage that nisbrox has with these uh wolf Walking stick. So this is a Nisbrox classic unit, Wolf Walking Stick. And uh, seeing him pair up with the Cuttlefish Gazelles is not going to be good. These Cuttlefish, of course, have keen sense and are great against... Uh, Nisbrox going to be arriving at the bottom right geyser, and he's going to realize he's too late. It's already been claimed. Tiger also going for the top left geyser. This is a really smart geyser grab. I think it shows... A bit more experience playing on this map, uh, just what you need to do. Uh, Miss Brox expanding a bit slower, but Devil's Island is not a map where you want to expand uh, slowly. You definitely want to almost spread yourself too thin on Devil's Island because there are just so many avenues for attack. And it looks like here we're running into those wolves again with the cuttlefish. Uh, but there's a lot of Miss Brox up north. Black Tiger 1's not going to be able to hold it if Nisprox decides to attack. We're seeing level 3 coming in for both players. Black Tiger's going to be first. Black Tiger building a preemptive sound beam at home, which I like that move. He lost his gazelles there, not paying attention to them. They got ambushed. Ooh. Yeah, this is actually going to be kind of tough, and Black Tiger didn't build a water chamber! right away so he's not ready for level two and suddenly this looks kind of like a nisbrox game uh, black tiger uh -oh. does have a henchman in the back of nisbrox's base that could build a water chamber uh, and he does have the water geysers those are going to be what saves him if he's able to keep this nisbrox retreating i think he's got a loner coming uh, you know i can never tell what these names are oh yeah, he does that's a loner. Yeah, yes. I was basing it off the, the slow build speed. Wow. Well, yeah, loners do Is take twice as long him? to build as other units. Wow, this Great is going to be such a good map for this. No hench shield, though, to follow it. No, he's he's building multiple instead. I think he's going to send them to the, all the different expansions. Yeah. And just kind of... Oh, rear chamber. Look at that point. rear chamber coming in. Nesprox's beach. Oh, look at that. Wow. And Nisbrox retreating units now to his lab. And this leap attack is really strong. Leap attack closing the distance in just a second. It's going to be a challenge keeping up with this is like a game of whack a loner. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. Uh, the loner being used to defend, for example, Black Tiger 1's base down south. Nisbrox's units just taking it. Um, he did, Nisbrox did take out this bottom right hand geyser. And, oh, look at that little hover on the top right. Uh, Hovering in to attack these henchmen. Oh, but it a ended up aggroing the units anyway. That loner, is it it's not even going to get to do any damage? Just been unattended to. 
Um, These loners, of course, cannot swim, so they cannot save this geyser in the bottom lake. No, but... There's uh, flyers. Yeah, flyers might be able to. Uh, the flyers did go and take out the range unit first. That was the right thing to do because these melee units aren't going to be able to do anything against uh, the range. The upgrade coming in from Black Tiger, which is going to be nice too for the generator. And Black Tiger is starting to take his expansion back on the left. Uh, his henchmen are just standstill on the right. And he's going to lose this workshop. I think Nesbrox has done a good job shutting down these loners. Yeah, he has. Yeah. They have not wow. done the kind of damage they needed to do. Yeah, they they, they really haven't. Um, Nisbrox has been able to take the top left geyser. Has he's been able to destroy the bottom right geyser, and uh, I think Black Tiger's micro is suffering. Is I mean, Nisbrox has yoke. That's going to be huge. Uh, Black Tiger is not there yet. He's just starting yoke now. Um, is he building henchmen? He is still kind of building henchmen. But this is a pretty even matchup so far. I would say um, if Black Tiger is able to take this bottom right hand expo and secure it, then it's going to be in his favor though. He still has this chamber behind Nisprox's base that I'm not sure Nisprox realizes there. It's not, it's not going after it at all. I want to see Nisprox put more pressure on right now. He has all these units just kind of around. Yeah. And... But the longer he waits, the more Black Tiger is taking this expo. Yeah. And there he goes uh, and takes the chamber up top. That's a good move by Nesbrox. Glad he scattered that out. And that chamber has done so much for BT in terms of distracting Nesbrox. Yeah. Absolutely. These flyers doing a great job trying to protect this geyser, even though BT did lose his henchman here. Oh, oh, is he? Yes, took it out. So those flyers did win against those ranged units, but there's a huge mass of Nisbrox coming down from the top. Oh, Black Tiger doesn't have anything that can defend this. This is why Nesbrox has been so passive. He's been building up a ton of units. Black Tiger doesn't have enough anywhere on the map. He, Black Tiger take all the units all over the map, and he wouldn't be able to defend against this. Um, wow, this is going to absolutely crush this expo. I'd like to see another loner come in from Black Tiger, actually, and raid the top expo of Nisbrox. That like would be really flyers strong. Go. Are the flyers and dead? Yes, the flyers did die. Loner trying to come in and defend here, but not strong enough without the hen shield against this many units. Loners are not good against masses of units, just against a few units. There's no sound beam upgrade either. Yeah, this is looking tough. These units are just slowly marching at a snail's pace. Uh, groups of units go at the uh, slowest unit's pace. They're probably all just swimming at 12 speed right now. And Black Tiger is doesn't have a lot of units to defend against this. He's just trickling a couple in. That's not going to be strong enough. Nisbrox now coming and raiding up top. Uh, Black Tiger building his fence in kind of a weird location, not protecting his geyser. Wow! For BT, just his home one, and I don't think he can reverse the momentum here. Uh, no, uh, he. I mean, he was doing a great job of expanding and taking territory, but Nisbrox was just building a mass of units, and they all have regen. So as they go from one site to the other, they get to heal in between. Uh. Wow, amazing play by Nesperox. Black Tiger one oh. of four. What's gonna I don't know if there's anything they can do though. I think that was a mistake. Yeah, I mean it would have to be he needs to build like a crazy level four loner and hen shield it and kill everything here. I didn't even know if he can do that though. There's just so many units. I think it's gonna happen. Although he did 
reestablishes expansion and he is mining from it interestingly yeah. as this brother's army moved on he's just to be populated wow but yeah with a ton of sound beams and he has these what these python crocodiles they're very slow however and this in the meantime all these units are just going to crush everything the black tiger has um Well, BT's trying to use the gyrocock to build sneaky water chambers, but they have been discovered. His plot has been foiled. Wow, and that's... It, it's just... And this Barox has all the geysers now. Yeah. And he has level 4, so there's no longer an advantage in terms of tech for BT. Yeah, and Nisbrox is just all over the map. Uh, and these belugas are going to take out this expansion, no problem. I mean, this is this is an Esprox game. You got your wish, Toast. Looks like we're going to see a lot more of Nisparox. Black Tiger out of the tournaments. I don't see, think there's a way that he can pull this around. Uh, he does have... A decently well defended bottom expo, but that could be easily taken out if these artillery units just wanted to target those towers and those henchmen. It's just no time for him to build a massive unit and no resources he just doesn't have. Yeah, I mean, the only way he could win is with just an insane lab rush or something, but um, it would have to. Like... He keeps trying to get these little clusters of chambers down so he can actually produce, but he keeps getting discovered and. Uh... Oh my gosh. They get destroyed before they can build anything. Nisprox loves these snakes. Of course. Who doesn't love snakes? Big snakes. Wow. These tentacle snakes. Oh my gosh. Look how long their tentacles are. They're like little snakes all in their own. Yeah, they can just they can shoot through cliffs. Amazing, yeah. That's that's game. That's game. Yeah. Do, um. Do we know who Nisprox is facing off against after this? Is that has that been decided yet? I'll have to check out the bracket. See if we can get the players in here. Yeah. For a post-game interview. Nisprox is gonna play the winner of Yagami and Anto, who I believe are playing very soon. If not playing now, let's take a look at these so. scores. Cole gathered was only 400 different. Very close in terms of Cole gathered. Electricity gathered, though, not even close. Miss Brock's taking that top left geyser from Black Tiger. I mean, it looked really good from Black Tiger at the start. It was a good back and forth game. Yeah, I mean, Black Tiger led in terms of levels. Hey guys. Oh, hey, how's it going, here. BC1? Well, pretty good, pretty good. Um, this How do you one, feel? yeah, I feel I feel quite good actually. But in in this last one, I somehow messed up my army. I I thought I had a different one. <laughs> oh, that's tragic. But it's okay. I think, um, yeah. I mean, you played really well in that last game. Uh, you were doing a great job. It's just Nisprox, I suppose, did a better job of just defending and massing up a huge amount of units, and then it was just an unstoppable force. Yeah, that's what he usually does. Like, this mass of units is what he usually brings you to the win. Yeah, true. Yeah, it was, it was just a really good play because you had map control you had the entire map you had amazing initiative with the chamber behind this Brox's base the loners uh it was all looking really good um and then it just fell apart Nisprox just had held a solid defense Nisprox, i don't know if you're available i know normally you don't get into calls uh, but if you want to talk I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game uh, awesome victory 
Yeah, I think my problem was that I didn't have any um, swimming or normal melee since I only had the loner. Oh. And I would need, I would need to have some melee too. Yeah, that is that is really tough on this map. Uh, at level 3, you do need a little bit more. Um, interestingly, I'm looking at your army now. You had two level 3 range units. You had both the alligator and the cuttlefish. Alligator, dolphin, and the cuttlefish camels. Um, it's a strange thing. <laughs> yeah, I've, not something I normally do, but um, anyhow, I'll just wrap it up there. It looks like Miss Brock's not av available right now for comments. Black Tiger won. It's sorry to see you go in the tournament already. Uh, I really was ex looking forward to seeing you in the top eight. Really fun games, though. Um, but yeah, that's really nice. Uh, I, Thank you for setting this up. Everything. Here. Yeah, of, of course, of course. I I was laughing so hard when you brought out those termite eels. Uh, that was so funny. <laughs> on, on yeah, Harper. it's. I mean, it really seems that they are OP. <laughs> yeah it was it was really really funny i laughed so hard so uh wonderful job thank you so much for joining and for your participation and we'll definitely see you in future tournaments Ooh, thanks thank you toast for joining me as well welcome